Life, the most mysterious phenomenon in the universe. How did it originate? This question has puzzled scientists, philosophers, and thinkers for centuries. The exploration of life's origins takes us on a journey back billions of years, to a time when the universe was still in its infancy. To begin with, we must accept that life as we know it wasn't always present. There was a time when our planet was a barren, lifeless sphere, devoid of any signs of existence. But then, something extraordinary happened. From the chaos of inorganic matter, life emerged. But how? That's the enigma we're seeking to unravel. Theories abound, each with its own set of arguments and counter-arguments. Some propose that life sprang from the primordial soup of chemicals present on early Earth, triggered by a bolt of lightning or a burst of intense radiation. Others suggest that life arrived on our planet aboard a meteorite or a comet, a theory known as panspermia. Then there are those who believe in the power of the RNA world, asserting that the first life forms were self-replicating molecules of RNA. And yet, these theories are just the tip of the iceberg. The truth is, we're still far from understanding the exact mechanisms that sparked the genesis of life, but this doesn't mean we're in the dark, far from it. Modern biochemistry has provided us with crucial clues about the conditions required for life to exist. The fundamental elements of life, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur, have revealed their roles in the grand symphony of existence. As we delve deeper into this mystery, we'll explore the evolution of life, the impact of Earth's environmental changes, and the transition from sea to land. We'll also examine the origin of intelligent life, one of the most intriguing aspects of our journey. There is so much to discover, so much to understand. The origin of life is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. But remember, every journey starts with a single step. So let's take that step together. Join us on this fascinating journey to unravel the mystery of life's origin. First, we need to understand what life is and what basic conditions it requires. Life, in its simplest form, can be considered as an entity that exhibits certain key characteristics. Growth, reproduction, response to stimuli, and adaptation to its environment through evolution. But is it merely these physical attributes that define life? Or is it something deeper, more profound? For instance, some argue that life is defined by its complexity and dynamism. It's not just about survival, but about the capacity to change, to evolve, and to interact with the environment in novel ways. Now let's consider the basic conditions necessary for life as we know it. Firstly, life requires a source of energy. This energy can come from the sun, as with plants, or from chemical reactions, as with some forms of microscopic life. Without energy, life cannot grow, reproduce, or perform any of its vital functions. Secondly, life needs a suitable environment. For Earth-based life, this means water, a moderate temperature range, and an atmosphere that provides the necessary gases for respiration and photosynthesis. Thirdly, life requires time. Evolution is a slow process, and it can take millions, if not billions of years for life to develop and diversify. Lastly, life needs the right building blocks. Specifically, certain types of atoms and molecules like carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. These elements combine in a myriad of ways to form the complex molecules that are the basis of life. In a nutshell, life is an intricate dance of energy, environment, time, and matter. It's a dance that has been going on for over three and a half billion years on our planet, and possibly even longer elsewhere in the universe. Now that we know what life is and what it needs, let's delve into the theories of life's origin. Life's origin theories are diverse. Let's explore some of the significant ones. One of the earliest and most recognized theories is the concept of abiogenesis. This theory proposes that life on Earth began from non-living matter, specifically simple organic compounds. Imagine, billions of years ago, the Earth's primitive environment was filled with a rich soup of these compounds, and through a series of chemical reactions, these molecules combined and recombined to form more complex structures, eventually leading to the first life forms. The process of abiogenesis is believed to have occurred in stages. First, monomers, or single-unit molecules like amino acids and nucleotides, were formed from the primordial soup. These monomers then linked together to form polymers, long chains of molecules, including proteins and nucleic acids. And finally, these polymers self-assembled into protocells, the precursors to modern cells. It's like building a house brick by brick until you have a complete structure. But abiogenesis isn't the only theory. 
Another fascinating concept is panspermia. This theory suggests that life didn't start on Earth at all. Instead, it proposes that life may have originated elsewhere in the universe and then been transported to Earth, possibly through meteorites or comets. It's a bit like the idea of a cosmic delivery service, bringing the building blocks of life from distant corners of the universe right to our doorstep. These theories are further supported by experiments like the famous Miller-Urey experiment of the 1950s. This experiment simulated the conditions of early Earth and succeeded in producing amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, from simple inorganic compounds. It was like cooking up life's ingredients from a recipe of Earth's early environment. Now, let's step into the realm of the slightly less conventional with the idea of directed panspermia. This theory takes panspermia a step further and suggests that life on Earth may have been deliberately seeded by an advanced extraterrestrial civilization. It's like the plot of a science fiction movie, but some scientists believe it's a possibility worth considering. And finally, there's the creation theory, which posits that life was created by a divine being. This theory is deeply rooted in religious beliefs and is a testament to the diversity of human thought on this complex topic. These theories give us a glimpse into the possible beginnings of life, but what does modern biochemistry tell us? Each of these theories, as different as they are, offers a unique perspective on the origins of life, and together they paint a vibrant picture of the myriad ways in which life as we know it could have come into existence. Modern biochemistry has provided some clues to understanding the mystery of life. Diving into the depths of biochemistry, we find fascinating insights that hint at the genesis of life. Biochemistry, the study of chemical processes within living organisms, is a field that has made significant strides over the past century. It's like a detective's toolkit, helping us piece together the puzzle of life's origins. First off, we've learned that life is fundamentally a chemical phenomenon. The building blocks of life as we know it, proteins, nucleic acids, lipids, and carbohydrates, are all complex molecules formed through a series of chemical reactions. These molecules interact in intricate ways to create the dazzling diversity of life we see on Earth today. Next, we've discovered that life relies on a small set of chemical elements. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur form the backbone of all known life forms. The ability of these elements to form stable, complex molecules under Earth-like conditions is a key piece of the life origin puzzle. But the clues don't stop there. Biochemists have also found that life's molecules exhibit a curious property, chirality. Many biological molecules exist in two mirror image forms like left and right hands. Intriguingly, life as we know it utilizes one form almost exclusively. This homochirality is a deep mystery, one that might hold clues to life's earliest steps. Perhaps one of the most exciting clues comes from the world of genetics. All known life forms store their genetic information in the form of DNA and use RNA to read it. This universal genetic code hints at a common ancestor for all life, a primordial organism from which all others sprang. In the laboratory, biochemists have been able to recreate some of the chemical steps that might have led to life. They've synthesized amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, under conditions that mimic those of the early Earth. They've also created simple self-replicating molecules, providing a glimpse of how life might have begun from non-living matter. Yet, despite these clues, the origin of life remains a mystery. Biochemistry can tell us what life is and how it works, but it cannot tell us why life exists. That question may lie beyond the realm of science, in the realms of philosophy and religion. Even so, the clues from biochemistry have brought us closer to understanding life's origins than ever before. They've shown us that life is a product of the universe's fundamental laws, not a miraculous exception. They've given us a framework for thinking about life's beginnings, a foundation upon which we can build future discoveries. Now let's consider the basic elements of life. The elements that form the backbone of all known life forms, the molecules that have the unique property of chirality, the universal genetic code that all life forms share, and the laboratory experiments that mimic the conditions of the early Earth. All these pieces come together to form the picture of life's origins that we have today. A picture that, while incomplete, is continually being filled in by the tireless work of scientists around the world. The basic elements of life, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur, play a crucial role in life's formation. Let's delve into this. Carbon, the linchpin of life, 
has the unique ability to bond with other elements in a multitude of ways, forming the backbone of complex molecules like proteins, nucleic acids, carbohydrates, and fats. Each element, in its own way, contributes to the symphony of existence. Hydrogen and oxygen, for instance, come together to create water, the universal solvent, the cradle where life's complex chemistry unfolds. Nitrogen, on the other hand, forms a vital part of proteins and nucleic acids, the building blocks of life. Phosphorus, a lesser known but equally important player, forms the backbone of DNA and is a key component of ATP, the energy currency of cells. And let's not forget sulfur, integral to some amino acids and vitamins, playing a key role in cellular function. But how do these elements come together to form life? Well, it's not just about the elements themselves, but also about the way they interact. Life is a delicate balance of complex chemical reactions, a dance of elements, if you will, it's about carbon atoms forming rings and chains, creating the scaffolding for larger molecules. It's about nitrogen and phosphorus coming together to form the backbone of our DNA. It's about hydrogen and oxygen creating not just water, but also contributing to the structure of organic molecules. These elemental interactions form the basis of biochemistry, the science of life at its most fundamental level. It's a complex, intricate web of reactions, a testament to the beauty and wonder of life, but remember, it's not just about the elements themselves, but also the energy that drives their interactions. The sun's energy, for instance, powers photosynthesis, the process that sustains life on Earth. With this understanding, we can now explore the RNA world hypothesis. Next, we delve into the RNA world hypothesis, a significant concept in understanding life's origin. In our quest to understand the origin of life, we encounter a fascinating theory known as the RNA world hypothesis. This hypothesis proposes that in the primordial soup of early Earth, RNA molecules were the first self-replicating entities that laid the groundwork for all life as we know it. RNA, or ribonucleic acid, is a complex molecule that plays many roles in the biology of modern organisms. It's most well known for its role in protein synthesis, acting as a messenger between DNA and the machinery that creates proteins, but what makes RNA truly remarkable is its ability to act as both a carrier of genetic information like DNA and a catalyst for chemical reactions like proteins. This dual functionality is at the heart of the RNA world hypothesis. It suggests that before the advent of the DNA protein world we live in today, there was a simpler world where RNA performed all these roles. In this RNA world, these molecules could replicate themselves and evolve forming the basis for the complex web of life that now populates our planet. But how did this RNA world come to be? According to the hypothesis, the early Earth provided the perfect conditions for the formation of RNA. The planet was teeming with the necessary building blocks, including nucleotides, the basic units of RNA. These nucleotides could have spontaneously assembled into RNA strands under these conditions, kickstarting the RNA world. This self-replicating RNA would then have started evolving, with certain sequences being more successful at replication than others. Over time, these successful sequences would have become more common, leading to a diverse population of RNA molecules, each with its own unique sequence and function. This is essentially natural selection at a molecular level. Gradually, the RNA world would have become more complex. Some RNA molecules might have started to produce proteins which are more efficient at catalysis than RNA, Eventually, DNA, a more stable carrier of genetic information, would have taken over from RNA in this role, leading to the DNA protein world we see today. The RNA world hypothesis is not without its challenges. For one, we've yet to create self-replicating RNA in the lab, but the hypothesis has profound implications for our understanding of life's origin. It suggests that life could start with something as simple as a self-replicating molecule, evolving over time into the incredible diversity of life we see today. Let's now consider the process of life's evolution. In the process of life's evolution, natural selection and species adaptation to environmental changes play a significant role. Unraveling the mysteries of evolution, we venture into a fascinating journey that spans billions of years. It's a tale of survival, adaptation, and an unending quest for existence. At the heart of this epic saga lies two intertwined concepts, natural selection and species adaptation. Natural selection is a mechanism of evolution where organisms better adapted to their environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. Coined by Charles Darwin, this concept explains how species evolve over time. 
with advantageous traits becoming more common within populations. Picture a group of beetles, some are green and some are brown. In a green leafy environment, the green beetles are less likely to be spotted by predators. Over time, the green beetles survive and reproduce more than the brown beetles, leading to more green beetles in the next generation. This is natural selection in action. Species adaptation, on the other hand, refers to the changes that species undergo in response to environmental shifts, allowing them to survive in new or changing habitats. It's not just about survival, but about thriving under different circumstances. Consider the peppered moths during the Industrial Revolution in England. Prior to the revolution, the majority of these moths were light-colored, blending in well with the lichen-covered trees. However, as soot from factories darkened the trees, the darker moths were better camouflaged and more likely to survive. Over time, the population of darker moths increased, a clear example of species adaptation. But it's not just about color changes in beetles or moths. Evolution has driven more complex adaptations. Birds developing flight, mammals growing fur, or fish evolving gills, all are products of natural selection and species adaptation. These processes have shaped life on Earth into an astounding array of forms, from the smallest microorganisms to the towering trees, from the fastest cheetah to the slow-moving sloth. Each species has its unique place in the grand scheme of evolution, intricately adapted to its environment and lifestyle. Yet this process of evolution is not just about the past. It's happening right now, as species continue to adapt to our rapidly changing world. Whether it's bacteria becoming resistant to antibiotics or polar bears struggling with melting ice caps, evolution is an ongoing story. As we delve deeper into the evolution of life, we must consider the role of our planet. How has Earth's changing environment influenced the formation and development of life? That's a question we'll explore next. Stay tuned as we continue our journey through the evolution of life. Earth's environmental changes have a profound impact on life's formation and development. The planet we inhabit is not a static sphere, but a dynamic, ever-changing world. Over billions of years, Earth has undergone dramatic transformations, each one playing a significant role in the story of life. Let's start at the beginning, shall we? About four and a half billion years ago, Earth was a hot, molten mass. Over time, it cooled and solidified, forming a crust. This crust, composed of rock and minerals, was the stage upon which the first act of life's drama would unfold. The next big change came with the formation of the atmosphere. This gaseous envelope around the Earth, primarily composed of nitrogen and carbon dioxide, provided the conditions necessary for life to emerge. It shielded the planet from harmful solar radiation, kept it warm, and facilitated the liquid water cycle, a crucial ingredient for life. Over eons, the atmosphere changed, oxygen increased, paving the way for a new kind of life to evolve, aerobic organisms. These creatures used oxygen to generate energy, a more efficient process that allowed them to grow larger and more complex. Simultaneously, the Earth's surface was continually changing, influenced by the forces of plate tectonics. This process shaped the continents, formed mountains and valleys, and created a diverse range of habitats for life to adapt and evolve. The planet's climate, too, has fluctuated wildly over the eons, from ice ages to periods of intense heat, these climatic shifts have acted as a kind of natural selection on a global scale, shaping the evolution of life. Species had to adapt to survive these changes, leading to the incredible diversity of life we see today. And let's not forget the role of water. The Earth's water cycle, with its processes of evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and runoff, has been instrumental in distributing life across the globe. From the deepest oceans to the highest mountains, Life has found a way to adapt and thrive in almost every corner of our planet. But what about today? Our planet is undergoing rapid environmental changes largely due to human activities. From climate change to deforestation, pollution to species extinction, we are witnessing a period of unprecedented change. But life, as it has done for billions of years, continues to adapt and evolve. Each chapter of Earth's environmental history has shaped life in its unique way, and life, in turn, has shaped the Earth. It's a complex, intertwined relationship, a dance of change and adaptation that has been going on for billions of years. And so, as we look to the future, we can't help but wonder, how will the environmental changes of today shape the life of tomorrow? Only time will tell. But one thing is certain, life, in its myriad forms, 
is a testament to the resilience and adaptability of nature. Now let's explore how our ancestors made the transition from sea to land. How did our ancestors transition from the sea to the land? And how did this change influence biodiversity? Our planet's story is one of constant change and adaptation. Around 500 million years ago, a significant shift occurred that would forever alter the course of life on Earth, the move from sea to land. This wasn't a single event, but rather a series of adaptations and evolutionary leaps spread out over millions of years. The first pioneers of this transition were likely simple organisms like algae and bacteria. These life forms began to colonize the coastal margins of the oceans, gradually making their way onto land. Over time, they evolved to withstand the challenges of their new environment, such as the harsh sunlight and the need to conserve water. Next came the plants. Fossils suggest that around 470 million years ago, the first land plants started to appear. These early plants were small, moss-like organisms, but they set the stage for more complex forms of life to evolve. As they proliferated, they transformed the barren landscape into a green, fertile one, creating new habitats for other life forms to inhabit. Then, around 365 million years ago, the first land-dwelling animals began to emerge. These were the amphibians, creatures that could survive both in the water and on land. Their evolution was a masterclass in adaptation, as they developed lungs to breathe air, limbs to move on land, and skin that could withstand the dry conditions. As these life forms evolved and diversified, they gave rise to a host of new species, increasing biodiversity on Earth. Each new species adapted to fill a specific niche in the ecosystem, leading to a complex web of interdependent life forms. This biodiversity is not just a testament to the adaptability of life, but also a key factor in the stability and resilience of ecosystems. The move from sea to land was not just a pivotal moment in the history of life on Earth, but a key driver in the evolution of biodiversity. It's a testament to the tenacity of life, its ability to adapt and diversify in the face of change, and it's a story that continues to unfold as life on Earth continues to evolve and adapt to new challenges. So when we consider the vast array of life forms that inhabit our planet today, from the smallest microbe to the largest elephant, we can trace their origins back to this monumental shift from sea to land. It's a journey that took millions of years and countless generations of life forms, each contributing in their own way to the rich tapestry of life we see today. Next, we'll explore the origin of intelligent life. How did intelligent life emerge on our planet? This question has been a subject of fascination and extensive research for centuries. The emergence of intelligent life is a complex process, a result of millions of years of evolution, fine-tuning, and adaptation. Let's start at the beginning. Life on Earth began approximately three and a half billion years ago. But it wasn't until about 600 million years ago that the first multicellular organisms appeared. These early life forms were simple, mostly composed of single-celled organisms floating aimlessly in the vast oceans. Fast forward to about 540 million years ago, and we witness the Cambrian Explosion, a period in Earth's history when the rate of evolution accelerated and a vast array of complex organisms emerged. This period was crucial in paving the way for the development of intelligent life. The evolution of intelligent life, however, didn't happen overnight. It was a slow, gradual process, shaped by various factors, including environmental conditions, genetic mutations, and natural selection. Let's take a closer look at one of the most significant steps in this journey, the emergence of the first hominids, our earliest ancestors, around six to seven million years ago. These creatures were not yet fully human, but they had already started to exhibit some traits associated with intelligence, such as the use of simple tools. Over millions of years, these hominids evolved, their brains became larger, and their intelligence increased. Around two million years ago, the first species of the genus Homo, our direct ancestors, appeared. Homo habilis, as they were called, showed a significant leap in intelligence, evident in their advanced use of tools. The next big leap came with the arrival of Homo erectus around one and a half million years ago. These early humans started to control fire, build more complex tools, and possibly even had a form of language. Fast forward to around 200,000 years ago, Homo sapiens, or modern humans, made their debut. With their arrival came a new level of intelligence. They developed sophisticated tools, created art, and demonstrated a deep understanding of the world around them. 
The emergence of intelligent life is a testament to the power of evolution. It's a story of survival, adaptation, and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. It's a journey marked by countless trials and errors, fortuitous accidents, and remarkable resilience. But even as we marvel at the complexity and beauty of intelligent life, we must remember that our understanding of its origin is far from complete. There are still many questions to be answered, many mysteries to be solved. Finally, let's consider the unresolved mysteries of life's origin. Despite the strides made by scientists, mysteries about life's origin remain. As we stand on the precipice of understanding, the vast chasm of the unknown stretches out before us, filled with questions that baffle the brightest minds. These questions are not merely scientific puzzles, but they bear philosophical and existential significance that touch upon the very essence of our being. One such question pertains to the first spark of life. Despite the various theories, the exact mechanism that transformed a cocktail of simple chemicals into a self-replicating, evolving system remains elusive. Was it a chance event, a bolt of lightning striking a primordial soup? Or was it a gradual process, with molecules slowly but surely acquiring the attributes of life over millions of years? The answer remains shrouded in mystery. Another unresolved mystery revolves around the transition from RNA to DNA. The RNA world hypothesis suggests that early life forms relied on RNA for both genetic information and enzymatic activity. But how did we leap from this RNA world to our current DNA world, where DNA stores information and proteins perform most of the cellular functions? This question, too, awaits an answer. Furthermore, the origin of cellular compartmentalization, a hallmark of complex life, is a puzzle in itself. The leap from simple prokaryotic cells without a nucleus to complex eukaryotic cells with a nucleus and other organelles is a monumental step in evolution. Yet how this transition occurred is still a matter of ongoing research. And let's not forget about the emergence of consciousness, perhaps the most profound mystery of all. How did matter arrange itself into a form that could not just live but perceive, think, and experience? The journey from inanimate matter to conscious beings is a leap that we are yet to fully comprehend. These unresolved mysteries are not roadblocks, but rather signposts pointing us towards the future of scientific exploration. Scientists across the globe are tirelessly working, employing cutting-edge technologies and innovative approaches to unravel these mysteries. Every discovery, every insight brings us one step closer to understanding our cosmic roots. Yet the more we learn, the more we realize how much there is still to discover. This is the beauty of science and the allure of the unknown. The mysteries of life's origin are not just about our past, but also about our future, guiding us as we venture further into the cosmic wilderness. In the grand scheme of things, we are but a speck in the cosmos, a fleeting moment in the vast expanse of time. Yet the fact that we can ponder our own origins, that we can question and seek answers, is a testament to the wonder that is life. The journey to unravel life's origin continues, the mystery deepens, and the fascination never ends.